<laughs> He's on the camera. <laughs> Good morning, little goats. <laughs> if you want me to come in and feed you, you gotta get your feet off the gate. This is the smallest mature chicken. Well, she's not quite mature, um, but she'll, she's close to her mature size. The smallest chicken that we have. Anyway, there she is. Pretty little chicken. Alright, run along. Go. Well, there's all the ducks this morning. That's a really cool sight. Just a long line of ducks. It's funny, you can hurt ducks, you can't hurt chickens though. I mean... It's incredible how dirty this thing gets. <laughs> Guys, I'm not ready to give up on yard grazing. I'm not ready to get up on give up on yard grazing. It's so I don't want to say redneck because I don't want to demean people who get a little sun on their neck. We're going to put our cow in our yard. It's just um, I'm not going to give up on it because it just makes so much sense for us when we have this lush lawn, when our pasture's been eaten down. We don't have enough pasture for the animals we have but today we're resetting our posts we're gonna start again hopefully the cows won't get out it's just so funny to graze your animals in your yard it's like everyone else has a lawnmower mows their lawn uh, and and we're just we're putting cows in the yard yesterday was a disaster with the animals and lawn grazing they escaped and ran all over hopefully today will be better Wilder Wilder's probably the biggest fans of, of our farm animals here. He loves them. He loves it. He heard the cow mooing. He's about to go down for a nap and he said, cow. Look. Besides <laughs> it has meat in it. What do you think what do you think ate that pumpkin? Which pumpkin? That green pumpkin. Oh. Cat. Yeah, yeah, the cat. But the cat did. Why would the cat eat a green pumpkin? What in the world? It's eating it right now. It just ate a bite. It just took a bite out of it. Chickens. It was chickens. Look at the little peck marks. See, it's oh, lots yeah. of little peck marks. It has to be chickens. Hey, chickens, you want this? <laughs> Get it! <laughs> what are you I do think they it? ate all the seeds out of the middle. Right. For better or worse. You know, there's Brussels sprouts on here. I'm trying to decide though if they're even worth harvesting because they're so bitter. You know what? Let's keep them. I was thinking of just tearing all this out. I think I'm gonna actually harvest them. They're tiny, they're bitter when I eat them raw. But you know, honestly, I've never eaten raw Brussels sprouts before. Anyway, here's the context. I thought these Brussels sprouts had just not produced anything, but I'm looking at this and saying, well, maybe if I cook it, it'll taste just like a Brussels sprout. For those of y'all who, Brussels sprouts is your favorite food, but you've never seen them grow. They, you got two moths, they grow on the stalk of the plant. And these are really small, but we're gonna keep them. As I've learned more about this solarization with tarps, I'm actually on this bed leaving this, the, you know, plant, Res residuals of all these leaves and stuff. I'm leaving them on the bed. Apparently the tarp helps break stuff down fast. And so we're trying that on this bed. If if that's true and it works and this, this stuff breaks down, I'm not leaving the thickest stems on, but if this stuff will break down into something that we could plant seeds through or just like stir into the surface, that would be really nice because it would keep me from having to haul this up to the compost and then compost it and haul it back but it would also just add add that right back into the soil there. All right, put this in our pile. All right, guys, this is a terrible thing. I'm taking out all these flowers. I gave Bree the choice. I said, we've got to cover one more bed if we're going to have any sort of winter garden. We have to cover one more bed with a tarp. So I said, it's either this bed on the upper side of the tarp or it's that bed. So it's this bed. We're going to pick all the flowers that are pickable 
and then we're gonna just tear all this out. I don't need to teach you how to pick flowers though. You're like a master bouquet maker, aren't you? Yeah. Pretty much. All right, take those flowers inside, buddy. The rest of this, unfortunately, I'm just gonna tear out and we're gonna go with this theory that these plants are gonna break down under this tarp. I hate to tear these out because, uh, what are these zinnias, because they would produce so much more this season. The sunflower stalks will get out of here because they will not break down under that tarp. And this chamomile, because it's a perennial little grow next year, we're gonna just move it to a different location. Namely, right here. Here, come help me pull this tarp up. We're gonna pull it all the way up over this side to here. And, no, we're gonna pull it this way. We're trying to pull it straight up this way. Okay, we got that tarp spread over our third bed. That's all it'll reach. I think what happened is we actually let them go too long in the garden. They were so tiny, we didn't think they were ready. Here, I'm gonna cut them off. You drop them in as I cut them off, okay? Okay. I'm just gonna cut them off as fast as I can and you grab them. What are you fussing about, Miss Alice? You got fresh green grass in the yard. You got fresh water You're with your babies. You shouldn't be fussing. I don't think you're ill or sick. Your weight's pretty good. We've had this kind of funny issue online where I think actually everyone who has jerseys has this issue. Actually, a no. Everyone who has jerseys who's online has this issue. People look at your cow and they say, your cow is starving because she's so bony. Uh, their weight goes up and down with lactation and you can always see their ribs. That's not the measure of how they're doing, whether you can see their ribs. It's actually kind of more complex than that and it involves multiple bones and points and how much of the boniness you can see. Brie actually knows that grading system a lot better than I do. I think we got them all cut off. There's our bowl. I'm not sure how they're gonna be, but there's the there's our Brussels sprout harvest. Well, um, that all of them? Yeah. Why don't you wash them real good yeah. and take out any that like really it's don't have any? We're cooking these Brussels sprouts and fried squash and Brie tried something different with, with this fried squash. She actually sliced it and breaded it a couple weeks ago and put it in the freezer. It's not as good as fresh but it's still good. And then so, I also made green beans. A fast veggie. Fast fried veggie. <laughs> yeah. And today also we have um, these mold inspectors and remediators coming out again to probably do an additional mold test and then um, give us an estimate on what it would cost if they did a remediation on the mold. I just want to know what they think about this room and our... Basically our we're getting an estimate and trying to learn some stuff. Yeah, I, just want, I mean I think they'll give us information. Yeah. Even if we're not going to hire them. So hopefully that'll bring some clarity as to kind of what, how we should move forward on the big stuff in this project. What bree has been working on is this back room, which has kind of always been a disaster, it's been our storage room, but it is so much, there's stuff piled right now, but we've taken tons of stuff out of this room. And then we're putting stuff in bins, we've got bins in here, we've got bins in the girls' room, more than that, full of stuff, organized, sorted, the stuff we're actually keeping. All of that is in preparation for um, probably tearing the carpet out and working on this back room. You'll notice the hams up here are missing, and the reason is, you know, we're, we're trying to get mold out of our house. The hams have mold growing on them, which is normal for hams. They can grow penicillin mold, it's no problem. But I was thinking about it, and they smelled really good, but it was a little moldy smell. And I was like, mm, for air quality, 
it's not such a good thing, I think, to have them in here. So they're back out in the barn in the fridge. People do that all the time, though, don't they? I don't know about in their kitchens in that stage of the process. Oh, okay. Later in the process, they'll be sealed with um, lard. I don't think they'll grow mold the same way because oh. the meat won't be exposed. So I think eventually they'll come back in. How do those Brussels sprouts turn out? So I cooked them. I did, like, I did maple syrup glaze on them. Hmm because they were a little bitter, and then I cooked them extra long because they were a little bitter. And they were good. really good, yeah. But I think they were too mature. They just never got big. Okay, yeah, I think we just, it's our first time. So we obviously didn't, we didn't take good enough care of them because we were watching the cabbage. <laughs> but they're really, they're tasty. Yeah, they are. So good job. Thank you. Is that all there was in all those plants? That's all there was, that's no. all of them. Okay. I almost threw them out, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad you didn't too. <clears throat> the mold, um, inspectors remediators just left and we had some good discussions with them they're gonna get us estimates kind of broken down on everything so we can kind of see what they would do but also pick and choose if we're gonna have them do if we would do it ourselves any part or have of them it, do it versus if what we would end up doing um, so well, they also did some additional testing. They did, uh, they the first time they came out and tested mold, they neglected to do a outdoor control. So that was a mistake on their part. So they came back and they're doing an indoor and an outdoor control, just one sample in and one sample out. However, they did say that it, the outdoor control wasn't, even though they forgot to do it, it wasn't necessary because our levels were so high. They're high enough, yeah, that this, yeah. there's no question, well, there's a fly, there's no question that something needs to be done and that there's mold, there's a mold source somewhere in the house. We know the probable mold source is the known mold, visible mold in the crawl space. So we talked through with them what they would do and essentially what they would do is scrub and treat, clean and, and treat every area in the crawl space initially and then one of the big focuses of what the guy was saying was um, fixing what moisture problems we have definitively um, and increasing um, air circulation yeah, ventilation. both upstairs and downstairs there's a lot more on the list too because yeah. we don't know what we're gonna find when we rip the carpet out of that room mm -hmm. we don't know what we're gonna find when we rip the paneling off the wall in our bedroom um, then it could be like, then we could also need to literally clean every single item in our whole house, um, in a, in a very special specific way, but we may not need to do that. Um, so yeah, we still have a lot of unknowns. We just know the first step is to fix the grading problem, possibly the gutters, and scrub and clean the whole basement and fog it. Is that right? It's kind of a series of pretty large projects. The grading's a big project. Oh. Downstairs is a um, pretty big project that won't take that long. Um, and then the back room, the tearing out everything in the house is a whole project in and of itself. I don't know, like, Those are the three I've been really projects. optimistic till you just said really big projects. Something about that, I was like, oh, really big projects are so hard to get done. They're big jobs, they're not huge projects. The thing is that they are hard to get done, but they don't take that many hours. Like, I think, I think the work downstairs could be done in two days. We also um, are continuing this de-junking process slowly. I should say Brianna is continuing <laughs> the de-junking process because that's gonna enable us to, um, well, first of all, we're throwing away a bunch of stuff and then we're gonna be able to clean out the back room as we need to remove everything from the back room to pull that carpet. I have already gotten rid of it, I, except for like maybe some books, which yeah. my rule in this house is we don't get rid of books, but I'm going to. Um, Cause we're not junky people really, we don't, we just have a lot of hobbies, so like... In a very small space to put it in. Yeah, but... So our house is like 900 square feet. I don't think we've mentioned that for a while. <laughs> we really do small. from time to time, though, on the channel. <laughs> I mentioned it. Not to minimize the significance of this problem, but one thing that was reassuring is that... He, is this guy's emphasis on ventilation and dehumidification. Um, 
and how much of a difference that can make. We were when he brought that up, we were talking about the most remote part of the crawl space. I think we should come up with a name for that part of the project because that's <laughs> like the deep, dark, unknown place that we will never see. Even but we still have deeper to address and darker the problem. Than where you took them when you moved the sink. Yeah. Yeah, even deeper and darker than that. Um, I'll take you there. I'll show you. I'll not... take you there. <laughs> dun, dun, you and dun, me. Dun, dun. <laughs> She's not coming, I know that. Uh uh. <laughs> not only could I not fit, I'm extremely claustrophobic. <laughs> Brianna, my dear, in this place, all of us are claustrophobic. <laughs> It's so, so silly to even think about going in there. I think what I was encouraged by was I didn't feel like he was just trying to take us for all that we have. No. I really felt like he was trustworthy because of the way that he made the suggestions and how not... I mean, I guess this is he deals with this every day, so this feels like a huge deal to me. But he made me feel like everything was doable, like it was totally fixable, and... And he knows we might do all of it. And he knows we might do all of it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And he was still helping us know what to do and how to do it. Well, he did, he wasn't coming in and saying like, oh, you can't do this. Like you have to have some, don't like, don't telling us how dangerous it is. He's like, he's treating us like we're not stupid. So, <laughs> I did ask him if he felt like we should move out. And he basically said he doesn't ever give that kind of advice to people. So, um... I said I didn't really need advice, I just wanted opinions, but um, for certain aspects of the cleanup, we will definitely need to move out for days at a time. I think we probably have and can improve the air quality just by deliberately moving air in and filtering the air, and I think that's going to make a big enough difference. I'm actually curious to see what the test results show. I think that's probably enough on that, <laughs> and we'll keep y'all updated. You look like you're bored of talking I'm about to go to sleep. Yeah, we've got to go do some stuff uh, for homeschool for our kids tonight. I mean, we got to get ready to go. Okay, I guess we have to end the video. <laughs> it's not been that long, but that's okay. Um, folks, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. See bye. you next video.